Hello and welcome to Animal World Live on Friday night with me, Brent Leo Smith. And uh, of course, I've got Yuka with me. And finally, we've managed to track the tracker. And we've got the incredible Norman Choke joining us tonight. <laughs> Hello and welcome. We are very excited. Well, Yuka and I are very excited to have you. Um, lots of familiar faces. Hello, Vicky, Ian, Steph, Rosalind, Safari Lover, Bonnie, Sir 50, Amanda, Danny, Daniel in Scotland, Julie, um, and uh, so many more. Zander has created the monster fire, which is trying to <laughs> blind me with. You, Yuka and I are starting to get very hot. It's My quite chilly eyes. this evening, but we, we, we're starting to sweat. So if you see beads of sweat, it's because Zander and his beard have decided to create a bonfire this evening. And now he's using my snake catching glove. Don't burn my snake catching glove, Zander. I won't. That is so I don't get stung by, uh, or bitten by scorpions, or stung by scorpions, or bitten by snakes. So Zander, I can actually see his cheeks going red. Zander doesn't like being in front of camera too often. Brian, can we do a slow zoom onto Brian, uh, Zander's beard? No, oh, he's, he's run, run away. away. He's run away. <laughs> so uh, it's wonderful to have everyone here live uh, we do have to give you a little disclaimer a little warning uh, South Africa is currently going through some very bad load shedding again at the moment uh, and so if we disappear completely it means our generator stopped working Bavel is going to be checking the generator every 20 minutes um, we have put together a whole pile of batteries we've got a generator running just so we uh, can still bring you Animal World Live this week. Yuka, how's your week been? Crazy. A Crazy. lot of things happen again. It's always busy on this side. Eh? It is. Yeah. It's always a busy week. Thank you, Boo. Thank you so much. Um, everyone's Rivke, everyone's saying stop, uh, stop abusing Xander. <laughs> um, leave the poor boy alone. Well, I don't know if he can be called a boy. He's bald with a beard. Um, the killer beard man, Christopher says. Um, yes, so uh, wonderful. Uh, Ian's is a major job fire tendering. Well, if you make a smaller fire, it's less of a job. Um, thank you, Darcy. Um, and of course, I love to give everyone a bit of grief. Um, it is just a bit of fun. Hey, Yuka. Yeah, I know you like it so much. <laughs> I do know that. I tease everyone. Um, but of course, uh, let's get going with what uh, we've got to see. So I think we're going to start with uh, an update on the wild dogs. And, uh, of course, we're very excited that we are going to be going up to La Palala. We're waiting for a confirmation on the date um, for the live release of those wild dogs. And there might be something very exciting happening on that. So let's go and have a look. We're going to chat over. You and I are going to watch what the wild dogs have been up to and have a chat. Let's have a look. There we go. I still love them. And look how big the puppies have got. Mm. Aren't they amazing? Every single week. Yeah. Every single week. Now, of course, keeping those dogs in the boma for a long time will give those puppies a really good chance at survival. Mm. And as all of you know, a very important pack, the only, one of the only genetically distinct free roaming populations of wild dogs left in southern Africa um, is the Waterberg wild dogs. And they've managed to survive in a huge farming community. Oh! We got knocked <laughs> over by an adult there. Um, but don't they just look happy? Yeah, there was a lot of interaction between adults and the small ones. Too. Uh, it, is, it is amazing. I, I, and you can see animals are happy. You can see when elephants are happy. But I don't think any animal quite mm. has uh, the excitement and sheer joy that you can see mm. from wild yeah, dogs I interacting. I love them being so happy. Yeah. Uh, Julia, how many puppies in the pack? You can, have you counted the puppies here? No, actually, I haven't counted. I think there's 11. Is it? Yeah, mm. 11. Um, ooh. Lions roaring just to the north of us. Um, the lions were actually... Yeah, we saw them. <laughs> we saw them this morning. They were at the waterhole. Yeah. Right here in front of the house. But unfortunately, they, they popped across to the north. Uh, Rachel, wild dog bonanza. Uh, amazing indeed. So spectacular. Pisces, Bobby, love their sounds. Love it. Hello everyone. Hi Joy. 
Thank you so much, um, Linda. That's much appreciated. Uh, thanks for all the great work. Painted dogs are my favorite animal in the bush. Um, Liz, love them, miss seeing them often. Me too. Uh, we're hoping that we will get another visit from wild dogs here on Pridelands uh, yeah. too. Catherine, indeed, squittering must be one of the best sounds in the world. Yeah, and that's uh, the sound of the, the little wild dogs chatting. Um, I think we've got one more wild dog clip a highlight. I'm just checking with them. Oh, so yes, so that was all from this week. Now, um, we have had quite a hectic week from a tech point of mm. view. Uh, Yuka and Bavu have been running around. <laughs> yeah, collecting the generator and the battery. Yes, yeah. yeah. So um, we have a pretty robust solar system. Uh, and it's very unusual that we will have more than sort of two days yeah. without mm. sunshine. And we had about five. Yeah. Cold, windy, wet. Not really wet, sort of slight drizzles, mm. uh, but it did uh, take uh, our solar panels and whatnot had a hammering. So now the sun's back out. Hopefully those all will start working uh, normally. Now, of course, um, so we might not have as many clips from our live cams as we normally do due to the weather. But, oh no, <laughs> oh no Bam just warned me, oh no, there's plenty. Don't you worry. So um, we're going to pop across to see what's been happening on all the different live cams that we have out in the bush. Oh, everyone. Oh, this is very interesting. We saw this behavior this morning, Yuka. With the baboons up in the knob oh, yes, trees. Yes, there yes, there, yes. there yeah. are um, some warthogs underneath as well. Uh, but, oh, Ew, what's happening? What's happening all of a sudden? Has something scared the baboons? Well, they were feeding on the flowers in the knobthorn, but geez, that's proper panic. <laughs> there must be a male lion coming. And they wouldn't really react that like that to, to leopard or, 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 or they might react like that to wild dog. Yeah. Do we know what chased them? Never no, never we don't. Them. Well, something chased them, <laughs> but that was impressive. Uh, but at this time of the year, we saw it this morning. Mm. Um, you, can you tell us about what we saw this morning? Yeah, we saw the baboons feeding on the Nobson tree, feeding on all these flowers. And yeah. they also got a panic though as we approached. Oh, yes. They were like all climbing down the tree hectically. It's actually quite funny. You actually see sometimes they have white moustaches from the pollen, the pollen of the knob thorn at this time of the year. Um, oh, thank you, TD Kid One. I'm pretty sure we're going to see uh, some elephant highlights from the elephant cam shortly. But let's see what the next live cam highlight is. That is a, a spider. And what is behind the spider? Is it the male lions? It is. It's the male lions. <laughs> oh yeah, I have to give my dad a call. Is yeah, that, excuse yeah. the spider work. Yeah. I'm gonna have to. My dad's been slacking. Um, he's actually uh, in the Manuelletti at the moment on oh, game drives yeah. with my aunt and uncle. Um, but yes, it's the big boys, the reed spray boys. Um, I think we should go for a visit there soon. What do you I'd think, you Yeah, I'd love I, I to think go let's, to, yeah. let's go have a look for oh, the reed spray that. boys. Um, and uh, always great to catch yeah, up with some of nice. our favourite big kitties. And everyone can see that the water hole is now nice and full. Liz, it is possible that the baboons would run like that from a human being. Um, it is very, very possible. Yes. So, yes. Why does the spider leave its web in the middle? I agree. <laughs> uh, absolutely, absolutely inconvenient and not so friendly from the spiders. But there we go. That's why we fortunately have two cameras. Uh, up at this particular site. Now we've busy been getting the Pridelands uh, Elicam second camera up, but today we had to stop working. So Buffalo, much, yeah. lion, elephant. <laughs> the guys <laughs> actually couldn't get a chance to finish digging the trench for the second camera, but hopefully that'll be up very, very soon. Okay, let's see what's next. We're back at Boss Camp. You might hear some scraping. It's Zander trying to fire angle. Oh, is that... That's one of the little girls. It is. Oh, how big have they got? Mabai Bai and her two daughters. Now, there's a strong chance that her two daughters are going to be going independent soon. Um, but it looks like they are still with mom for now. <clears throat> there they are. And so Mabai Bai and the girls coming in for a drink. 
and we definitely yeah we def i think we should Please, definitely yeah, yeah, yeah let's make nice. a plan let's mm. you and i are going to go on a, a little adventure <laughs> to the reed spread to catch up with our favorite oh, lions and so cheetahs cool. there oh so absolutely amazing now i've got lots of news about my bye byes cubs but i can't tell you yet but they're going to be very very important and i think a lot of you are going to be very chuffed to hear um that they are going to be moving but i can't tell you where they're going to be moving yet but a very exciting project that we're involved with with the Endangered Wildlife Trust. So, it's very, coming. very exciting. <laughs> it's coming. We can't talk about it yet um, as um, what happens. But there is a good chance that uh, those two females are going to go independent shortly. Uh, and with female cheetahs, when they first become independent from mom, they will sometimes spend a year together. Mm. So, a lot of people will see two cheetahs and always assume it's males. But it's not uncommon for female cheetahs from the same litter to spend a year together. A lot of you will remember um, Amani's daughters. Um, I spent a lot of time with them in the Masai Mara. And they stayed together for over a year after they left mom. Uh, Rachel, you're going to have to wait to find out. Rivka, same thing. And indeed, Darcy Ann, they absolutely are getting huge. Okay, next live camera highlight. Um, okay, we're at... The six-sided water hole again. Oh, in <laughs> <laughs> Really thirsty That's banded cute. mongoose. <laughs> that was Charging so in. Oh, I do love a good banded mongoose sighting. Much happier now that they don't have to crawl down the logs. That's true, eh? To get the no water. No struggles. <laughs> That's so cute. They're thirsty. Very thirsty. Quite a small troop or small business. Mm, business. The uh, original um, collective noun for mongoose is a business of mongoose. I, I've got a question for you, Yuka, and for everyone at home. Um, who knows who Ricky Tiki Tavi is? What? Brian knows. Zander knows. Ah, oh, there we go. BM says that was his favorite, but I'm not saying what. Babu, do you know who Ricky Tiki Tavi is? Norman, Brian knows, Vim knows, I know. Not me. Not you. Oh dear, we have to teach you about Ricky Tiki Tavi. Um, Ricky Tiki Tavi is a story, okay. but we'll see. We'll give um, anyone a chance to answer. Um, so while uh, there we go. Actually, Pam, they must have been hiding in wait for the right chance to drink. Now, of course, being a small animal like a mongoose, it's quite risky, mm. uh, and particularly there, hawk eagles, marshall eagles. Mm. Even lions, oh, cheetah, will all chase and uh, um, attack mongooses. Um, Safari Lover, he is not a cartoon. Uh, Kalena, he is indeed a mongoose. Um, a, yes, Jungle Book. Um, Rudyard Kipling. Um, so it is not actually part of the main Jungle po uh, Book, but part of the same sort of uh, era of stories. So the Indian mongoose, that actually looks very similar to a banded mongoose, just doesn't have bands. Mm. And Ricky Tiki Tavi um, is one of the stories uh, from the Jungle Book, but not obviously okay, the Mowgli the story. story. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, um, and, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. There we go. Mary for Wild, um, one of my favorites of all time. Joanne, what type of mongoose is he? He's an Indian mongoose, was always fighting against cobras. So, if you guys uh, do get a chance and love a little bit of literature, um, I would suggest looking for Ricky Tiki Tavi mm -hmm. by one of my favorite authors of all time, Rudyard mm -hmm. Kipling. Okay, that's nice. Um, and if you haven't, also go have a look at the Just So stories. You not read the Just So stories? Mm -hmm. On the banks of the great gray, green, greasy Limpopo, all beset with fever oh, trees. Wow. No, that's How the to. elephant got his trunk and all sorts of wonderful stories from my youth. So yes, uh, if you do have a, a, a yearning for a bit of culture, um, go have a look at Rudyard Kipling. Um, the Jungle Book, of course, is his most well-known one, but there's so many fantastic... Uh, well, actually, I think... Um, Rudy, uh, well, Jungle Book, yeah. Jungle Book's probably the most um, famous one, followed by Kim, which is another great book. A bit more serious, though. Um, but anyway, <laughs> moving on from Kipling, let's have a look at our next uh, clip from the live cams. Okay, we're back at Boss Camp. Vim says I must watch this very carefully, okay? <laughs> oh, dear. It is a civet. Is it? Yeah, I would say civet. 
Yuka. What do you say, Yuka? There. Let's play it again, Leslie. From scratch as it comes through. Is this the one that, that the mass, mass debate is about? It's a civet. It's a civet. So there was debate whether this. It's not. It's, I don't think When so. you can zoom in in the computer, it didn't look like civet. Okay, let's start it again. Let's play it again. Because this is a very big call. Wait, I've watched, I've watched it's this. not a pangolin. The body it's movements are wrong. It's not a pangolin. Bible says it's a pangolin. No, I don't. <laughs> no? I watched a civet one last week. And it wasn't like that. So yeah, but it's creeping in. Let's play it again. So <laughs> let's see. What do you guys think? No, honey badger. I think honey badger or civet. It's not civet. It's not. A, it's not a it's pangolin. Not a pangolin so a it's not a pangolin. <laughs> Apparently, this is causing great debates. As I said, I haven't seen this before. No, you can. You Someone says it's a komodo dragon. <laughs> <laughs> the way it's moving is wrong for a pangolin. So pangolins normally walk up on their back legs. So. Yeah, but there is a two little legs also in front. I, I if you I had to make the call, I'd go civet. It's not a civet. <laughs> I'd say it's a civet. No, I have. We have to show you in the screen. We zoomed up. Yeah, tail shapes wrong. Body shape says civet. That's my call. Um, I don't think it's a honey badger either. Um. Yuka, Yuka, Yuka is disagreeing with me. I think this is going to cause a bit of conflict in the house about what animal that was. Um, I, 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 we understand it's not uh, clear. Everyone says a badger. Um, not walking like a T-Rex, so not a pangolin. So body movement, I would say civet or honey badger. Uh, tail length tells me it's a civet, not a honey badger. The honey badger's tail would be much shorter. You guys are still not sure. <laughs> Look at no, that you have look. to see Zim Dab. Okay, we, we, okay, what we'll do is we'll, afterwards, um, when we get electricity back and whatnot, we will yeah. zoom in, cut yeah. in, um, and then we'll probably uh, get Melissa to pop a clip on social yeah, media, have a vote. Okay. All I know is I get to say 99.9 .9 times I'm right when it comes to these things. But I'm happy to be proven wrong. Okay, we'll see. Okay, let's... Um, Yes, it's here. We got crocodile, otter. Um, otter. I didn't think so. um, oh, thank you, indigo girl. Uh, a butterung. Uh, no butterungs here, John. Um, looks more canine carnivore to me. Um, there we go. Looks like a civet. Will agree to disagree. Um, yeah, I'd say the reason I say civet is the tail, mm. uh, length of the tail. Uh, it would be between civet and honey badger for me, uh, but I don't think it's a honey badger. I would say it mm. is a civet. Um, very, very. Uh, Indigo girl, love, love, love. Tale of two mothers. Help need more. Uh, well, we're working on currently episode two of Pride Lens at the moment, so that should be coming out Sunday. Not this Sunday, the Sunday afterwards. So that's when that'll be coming out. Uh, Rufke, Yuka's like not fully believing you, but <laughs> saying go on as you want. Um, Kalena's wagering. Um, it's a honey badger. Yuka looks like she doesn't agree with you. <laughs> Too long and low for a civet. Yeah, don't think so. Anyway, um, what we'll do is we'll try to do a cropped version. And everyone, actually, well, we're going to bring out, like, let's bring our special guest in quickly. We'll send him out yeah, again. Come, Norman, idea. come have a look at this. What animal do you think this is? So, no, you can stay, Yuka. I want, we want to see. Just come behind me here, Norman, quickly. So. Okay, Norman. And I'll be the judge. Yeah. What animal? But you have to watch what the animal is that? Fungwe. This is everyone's quiet staring. Again, again. So, to to be very honest with you, the animal is so chubby. So very short, as well short legs. I see black and whitish um, color, and it's it's. A I'm not, tail. Uh, there we go. No, 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 uh, 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 if we can zoom, that's what I think. Look at the tail. See that the tail there. Yeah. I, I I I'll put my hundred bucks here for um, African civet. Yeah. I'll put my definitely. Uh, that's what. Uh, that's my call. 
I'll put 100 bucks for civet. Thank you, Norman, for your That's expert opinion. I think I'm losing out on this <laughs> <laughs> So we'll, we'll chat to Norman properly again just now. Um, not bigger than a civet. I said it's probably uh, about civet sized, yeah. as in it is a civet. Two and one, so I'll okay. it. <laughs> okay, let's go along to the next clip before we cause a family fight. <laughs> okay, we're back at this. Oh, hello, Red Sprite Pride. Sure, is that bucket? My goodness, she's getting big. Yeah, she is getting big. Here comes Nileti. Oh, lovely, 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 lovely to catch up with the rich red pie. I definitely think let's go. Let's go. Let's go for I a visit. I haven't seen them since they were the cubs. Yeah. So, uh, uh, for those who don't know, Yuka's also spent a lot of time uh, on Reed Sprite with Bucket, BB, mm. and um, of course, very sad that Hahani is not there. Well, there's there's BB, speak <laughs> of the devil. What are they chasing? Each other, probably. Or th that's why those banded mongoose were in such a rush. <laughs> Drink before the lions get there. So, I actually think that's. Is something. Yeah. Your bucket's got so big. And so is BB for that matter. Um, incredible how they've grown. And you can see BB starting to get that awkward teenage mane, <laughs> that, that bum fluff that uh, uh, you see in humans. He's starting to get his funny little mane. So yes, the, they've done very well um, without mom. Uh, very sad as it was that she, she passed away. But yes, uh, so the pride is thriving. Um, and we're definitely going to go and catch up with them again in the near future. So very, very cool to see. It's always nice to be able to just, if, at least every week, mm. almost every week, we do get a sighting yeah. of them at one of the water that holes. So it is always wonderful to catch up. Um, oh, look at all of them. So there's Bucket on the opposite side, drinking. BB on the far right. Nileti in the middle, between all the little ones. But they have got so big. So, I mean, the, the thing that bodes really well for the Pride is the fact that Bucket and four, all four of Nileti's cubs are girls. So that means okay, the Pride that. is going to be quite strong quite soon. Mm. And our old poor BB is going to have to find a new home mm. in the not too distant future. Yeah, they are looking really well, really healthy, high prey density on the reed spray. Awesome to catch up with them. Okay, what other treats does VM have for us? Oh, black black jackal. I think I chose this one. Did you choose this one? Did you try your jackal call last week? Or did you check it out? I did. Oh, you did. Nice to see them doing so well. Now, a nice, a nice dry season like this is obviously a great time for them. They find it quite easy to catch um, what their most favorite prey is when they're hunting, is, which is um, gerbils and other oh, rodents. Really? They do love a good, good mouse. Mm -hmm. Come on, one more jackal call. By yourself now. No, I don't want to do it by myself. Come if, on! If you want to do it, then I'll do it. No, it has to be by yourself so we can judge. No, I'm not I'll do it by it. myself first, then you've got to do it. Okay. How's that? Okay, I did this last week, I think. Come on, your turn now. <laughs> <laughs> stop laughing so much, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll stop teasing yeah, you now. Okay. You see, um, okay, VFP, what's our next clip? <laughs> oh, vultures. Thirsty vultures. Obviously, they've probably been eating. Whatever the reed spray There's pride. something going on there because there were so many vultures on the tree next to it from this. And was this other angle one? Was this close to the time the lions were there? No, it wasn't. Wasn't. Um, so there we go. <laughs> now we have people making jackal a lot, uh, jackal noises in our ear. Um, Charles, who's sitting thirty kilometers away from us, is now trying to do jackal imitations in our ear. Um, but it's not uncommon to find vultures congregating around water holes after they've had a big feed. Um, so, yeah. Um, very huge birdies. 
Uh, so very, very cool. Okay, who's next on the cameras? Ah, I was waiting. I, you I, see, I you knew... see who that is? Is it? It's Stompy! Yeah, I'm Yo, Stompy. You're <laughs> our friend. Hello, Stompy. So Stompy is the elephant now. He's right in front of camera. Uh, and it looks like he lost uh, the bottom portion of his trunk. Unfortunately, most likely to a snare when he was quite a lot younger. Uh, but it's been um, incredible to watch because elephants adapt so well. And he's able to feed and function quite well without, uh, without the tip to his trunk. Now, it is a bit curled, exacerbating it there. But there we go. There goes old Stompy. When he drinks, it's the best. Yeah, the sound he makes. When, when, you, when you're right next to him when he's drinking, it's his... <laughs> and he's got to drink quickly because he can't really tuck mm. it like the other Ellie's with that, that prehensile tip. And he's got to get it to his mouth quite quickly. And he always with the limpy, which is the one has a little... Yes, eat, we saw limpy tonight. Did you? Mm, I didn't oh, really? down. Yeah. And then Melissa pointed out, do you think it's a reason that both like kind of disabled once they together? No. I just just they happen to be. They're part of a group of uh, influx, 20 or 30 young bulls mm. who are almost always together. I just think they... Um, so they just both happen to be all this together and all this have like... Okay. No, it, is, it is fascinating. Mm. Um, and we're quite lucky here because we see a lot of the same elephants regularly here on Pythons. Mm. So we've got Stompy and Limpy, Kumo, Dex... Um, Gap, yeah. um, yeah. Alicia Keys, and her herd, and of course Susan <laughs> McCurdy, um, herd. So uh, we're very lucky that we can catch up with these Ellies regularly. Now, let me just make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Ah, now, of course we're out uh, quite a lot out in the field, and we 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 do tend to have some fun times. Now, this was during the first five weeks of lockdown, and we were out filming Mabai Bai and her cubs, and they were walking down this wonderful big rhino path on the Ridge Sprite Reserve. So we decided to put a GoPro on the ground and hope they would walk over it. Same uh, GoPro, Pam, but different big cat. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is around the same time during the five-week lockdown when we were locked down at um, the farmhouse on Reed Spreads that um, they <laughs> decided to play with it. We were mm -hmm. playing with the GoPro quite a lot, um, popping it down while the lions and, and cheetah were walking. Um, yes, you took the GoPro for a walk. 
quite nice to see the cheetahs, the long legs. <laughs> um, so it was, uh, it was, it was really, really fun. Uh, yes, chef, the lions have made off with that exact same GoPro before. Fortunately, the cheetah lost interest in it a lot quicker than the lions did. We had to wait and worry that <laughs> lions are strong enough that yeah. they can crunch through the the hard plastic. Whether is the cheetah will probably um, scratch the outside casing, maybe, but not damage the the GoPro. All are more, I would definitely hire the cheetah as a camera operator. Much better than all these nonsenses <laughs> we've got running around here. Yeah? Hey, Zander. Hey, Brian. <laughs> I'm only teasing, of course. Um, but yeah, so it's it's quite fun because we just wait, and when they get they get bored of it, it's the smell and whatnot, and it's just something a bit novel. I mean, you saw one of the cubs playing with a rock. Mm. They they are playful animals. Oh. So um, I actually forgot. Zander just reminded me that I should be telling you things, but I'm gonna tell you at the end now because we're into it. Now this happened in our garden right here on Pridelands yesterday. about that folks it was um <laughs> the load shedding and or could have just been zander's fire blinding us um <laughs> i'm blind again i'm back okay so sorry about that really interesting sighting i'm not going to keep you away from it um we have as i said many many backup and contingency plans um for when things happen and we've frozen i think can you still have my audio Oh, we're back. So uh, let's take you across. Uh, there we go. We're back. Wait, we're having a second. Oh, here we go. Uh, okay, we're ready to play um, this incredible sighting that happened right here in the Pridelands Garden. So sorry about that, everyone. Um, we're having issues with the generator not putting out enough power to run everything. I mean, it's 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 hard enough to go live from the middle of the bush um, when everything's working well. Um, but we will try our best to keep that through. Um, so um, we've come back to us. Uh, we will pop that clip up onto social media. You can watch it through. Very, very interesting behavior. The bat survived, mm. actually managed to take off and get back up into yeah, a tree. Sort of a happy ending. Yeah, sort of a happy ending. So, um, yeah, so sorry about that. Um, I don't know if we're going to try. Ah. This is my now time to shine. <laughs> <laughs> 
according to Zander. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be changing the, the format slightly of Animal World Live going forward. Um, we're also going to be changing the day. So Animal World Live will actually be moving to Saturday night now. So uh, it'll be after the private live safaris in the afternoon. It'll be on a Saturday evening. We're hoping more people will be able to attend. And uh, we're also going to be having some very cool little clips. So out in the field is basically what you just saw now. What Yuka and myself have been up to, Bavu, Brian, everyone, when we're out in the bush. However, we have now launched a new little series. Well, that's Zander's little baby. Uh, Bavu is going to be running around filming quite a bit of it, I think. And it's called The Dog Den Diaries. So when that bat took off, Zander stopped filming and ran away like a scared little girl. That type of footage will now be in the new Dog Den Diaries. Um, and it's just going to be little behind-the-scenes clips of what happens um, around the Painted Dog crew during the week. So we're very, very excited about that. Am I forgetting anything? No. no. So it's just some new add-ons um, to Animal World Live. And um, so that will be... Cindy, it'll still be the same sort of time slot. It'll be 7, 7, probably 7 p.m. Central African time. So after all the other live drives have, have finished, um, we're just trying to condense our work week um, so everyone can actually get a day off every now and then. Uh, at the moment, we work, uh, we take, mon was it Mondays? Mm -hmm. Mondays. <laughs> sometimes we take Mondays off or sometimes we take Thursdays off. So everyone's been working really hard, so we're just trying to condense our work week um, to the weekend and, and make things a little bit simpler. And hopefully more people will be able to, um, uh, not tomorrow, next Saturday, Daniel. So it'll be Saturday morning in the U.S., so probably a few more people at home um, able to watch. Now, uh, we, as I said, the generator's having a bit of problems powering everything. So if we start playing clips, the internet goes down, uh, all the clips freeze, etc. So we, we're just going to have to chat from now on. So unfortunately, there are going to be no clips. So we're going to do, we, uh, okay, the only thing, okay, we can still roll one clip. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to roll Norman's clips. So normally we would have said, introducing the amazing, the tracker that took us three weeks to track down Norman Jorger. And we would have a video of Norman. That's not going to work. So I'm just going to ask, you get to swap seats with Norman. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome, welcome, my friend. Thank nice you, to have you here. Yeah. My son name is not Choke, it's Chauke. I know, but it was it doesn't sound I know. Chauke. Uh, is that it's better? Chauke. Chauke. Yes, that's okay, better. There we go. <laughs> so uh, some of you might have met Norman for the first time today on Safari Live uh, or on Wild Earth. You did your first little live segment. Yeah. How did that yeah. go? Um at the beginning I was very nervous, but you know, the office is the office. I hey. mean the bush is the bush. So you man. can't be nervous about something that, you know, maybe the technical side of like, you know, when to talk and like, you know, all those small things. But otherwise it was, it was quite um, good. I enjoyed myself. Um, and that and now, first live drive, now first live show appearance, all in the same day. No, it's actually not my first. <laughs> live? Yeah, it's not my first, but don't worry, we talk. Live some, show appearance. Or show appearance live, yes, live. It's not first time. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. when was your first time then? No, many, many time ago. But we'll talk later. But <laughs> everyone saying hello, Norman. Welcome, Norman. You're awesome, Norman. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, Norman, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, where you're from? What you do? Um, so. Obviously, name it's Norman, and my surname it's a, it's actually a very famous or a very popular surname in South Africa. Um, Chauke. Um, I was born in um, somewhere around like Soweto and Bara, and when I was somewhere around like three years old, um, we moved back to the community or to the village in Lipopon, um, a very beautiful small village called Makuleke, and. Um, Far north. So if someone says that I've been far north of South Africa, that's where I, I'm, I'm from. Um, currently, I'm working as um, a 
tracker, facilitator, or teacher with eco training, and um, I've been doing that for um, over seven years now. And yeah. you're a world's first in terms of the tracking industry, mm. aren't you? In terms of the assessment and stuff like that. Um, yes. So, um, uh, people, please allow me to say, like, you know, um, no, right. uh, Norman's very, very <laughs> humble. I'm the one who's trying to. Make him speak up about <laughs> yes, himself. Yes, yes. So let's say um, I'm the first ever African. Let me not use the, the word black um, South African to ever get um, the qualification status of being an assessor and in the side of trekking. And um, yeah, 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 that's that's that was a that was a sorry that yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> So that was really um, something cool to achieve, um, special at the age of, I think it was somewhere 24 when, when I, yeah. when I um, um, qualified as an assessor. And this other qualification that you know, I attained um, in the guiding or trekking or the bush industry. And um, um, it's just, I prefer to stay humble about them because when you start, you preach about them, it's like you're bragging and um, that's... That's not who I am. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, a lot of people asking, Norman, uh, what's your favorite animal? Oh, I was actually talking about um, that today. Uh, my favorite animal, it's an elephant. Um, yeah, elephants are my favorite animal. And the reason behind that is just elephants are super um, intelligent animals. Um, one of the moments that I had with elephant when I started um, working as a trekker, I was with a guy, he's a very famous um, legend, Alan Mark Smith. So I was doing my trails guide course um, in the Kruger National Park in um, Makuleken. So we, it happened that in that time, um, there was a drought that was happening and we found this um, um, cow that died, elephant cow. And... Um, we were watching her and the whole head suddenly, uh, suddenly showed up and then one of the young calf, I assume, or we assume that it was her calf and then she placed her two front feet on top of that um, cow that was um, lying there, um, probably like, you know, dead. But yeah, it, it was like, you know, a very emotional um, in, uh, moment for me, mm. for everyone, for the whole group and from there. I started to become very curious about elephant. And then I went and did some more research. And then I found that, you know, they're actually a very um, intelligent animal. They and, are indeed. Yeah. Yeah. And we're very lucky here on Pridelands. Yo, elephants, this, uh, elephant elephant ha heaven. Eh? Every, elephants everywhere. Uh, yeah, this elephant heaven. Yeah. Um, and someone's saying, can you do the bird call you did on drive today? It was amazing. <laughs> what bird call did you do to this today? Oh, okay, I remember. So, you know, with the um, now it used to be called a Cape Turtle Dove. Ah, yes. And then work harder. Yeah, work harder. But I think... Or drink two, lager. Yeah, I think it's two birds that I, I imitated this um, 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 afternoon. And um, drink lager and the um, fiery neck night jump. Ah, so, saying yes. like... Good this Lord, is, deliver us. us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, that one too. Um, yeah. Uh, Grumpy Old Man says that the Tracking with Norman series is great. He's been watching it on the Eco Trainings awesome. YouTube. Awesome. Um, I'm glad that you're enjoying it. Eh? And then, um, how long have you been in the bush for, from Rosalind? Um, like, I can't... Uh, all my life, basically. <laughs> I'm a village boy, um, so I grew up, like, with uh, most of the stuff that we see in the bush, so... But professionally, like working in the bush, so we can say from 2013, yeah, okay. from 2013 up ah, until now. Been bad, now I'm very old. Eh? Check this out. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so um, there we go. So I saw Heinke would like to know what is your most dangerous situation that you've had in the bush. Um, I don't think there is actually, and reason the for power come back on. Yeah, it seems like that. It's very early. It's supposed yeah. to be out for another hour. So, yeah, yay! We so might be able to, able to show some of Norman's yes. clips. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, so the electricity just came back on. I saw the lights come on everywhere. Um, um, okay, so right, we'll, we'll, we'll show some of Norman's clips a little bit later. Um, yeah. But we'll carry on chatting for now. Um,
So, yeah, I, I, I don't think I have won. Most of my dangerous encounters were with um, people. I agree not, with yeah, you. Yeah, not with animals. Far more um, dangerous. Yeah, it's just animal or oh, this office is such a beautiful um, place to be. And, um, yeah, I encourage people to come and visit people in the bush. It's just amazing. Um, I don't have stress or anything, but the moment that I drive out... The only in, stress he has is when he can't find the leopards as fast as me. Nah, nah, <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's failing, eh? Oh! <laughs> you, <laughs> challenge accepted. We're going to have to have a competition. Okay, okay. Um, um, and then, uh, Kennedy, Anne, what animal do you, or what animals do you find the most challenging to trail? It's definitely a leopard. Yeah. Definitely a leopard. Agreed. He Pick comes and asks for tips from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is this is gonna be fun. No, no, no. How many leopards have you found in the last two weeks? Oh, I just found one or two yesterday. Oh, do you mean the Mom. ones that came to drink that you didn't no, track? No, I found it. No, you saw it. You didn't track it. No, like remember when we track in the bush, we don't only track by you know looking at the spore. We also track by yeah, ears, uh, ears, uh, ears, 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 Norman and I have a Norman and I have a friendly bet going, and I'm winning. No, he's uh, not. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, let's um, get on now. Yes. So yes, Liz, Norman is the assessor. He decides whether you can track or not, pass your test. Um so if you were on an eco training course, uh, Norman would be the one saying, Well, you've got two can you explain to me you've got two very different types of tracking? Um, you've got what we call track and sign. Can I? Can I, that's Go my for job? It. Yeah. You, we can talk about leopards later. Okay. On. I'll you try carry to on. track leopard. So, <laughs> so with um, trekking, it's it's like this. Um, we have like two components, and one of them is just it's basically looking out for signs. Yes, it's looking for signs. Um, so looking from animal spore, like you know tracks looking at like sciences, like, you know, feeding signs, like scat, et cetera, et cetera, bed tracks, grass tracks, or anything that looks like a, um, a sign. That's one component. And we call that track and sign. And the other component is trailing. So basically it's like now you find um, elephant track or lion track or a leopard or anything. And then you follow that animal until you find it. So um, there's two um, to the tracking. So track and sign and um, trailing component. Yeah. And a lot of people say they're a level three tracker when they only have a uh, level three tra uh, trail uh, or, track and, or track and sign. sign yeah. Trailing is far more difficult. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's difficult, but I would say it's, it's a different thing from mm -hmm. like now identifying like, you know, the variety of different um, life that have been in a specific area. But Trailing it's, uh, trailing, it's fun, guys. I, yeah, it's I my favorite. I encourage people to do trailing. Um, I always tell people, trailing, it's, it's similar to like, you know, playing a song so, uh, with a guitar. Not just playing a song, but you're playing this song with a guitar. Um, so basically, the animal has the other string of the guitar, and for you, you have the other one. And the moment that you see um, a specific animal spore, it's like now you're choosing your... Um, what is that? The, uh, the song of the name. So if it's, it's a lion track, then uh, the name of the song now it's like a lion. And the moment that you start trailing it, you know, things get even better. And like, uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's amazing, guys. It's, it's beyond um, our understanding. Yeah, yeah, it's pure joy. Yeah. I always tell people trekking is very deep and it is indeed deep. Yeah. So Ian's got an interesting question here, and I, I know the answer, but I'm going to let you answer it. Norman, do you prefer to track at day or night? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> at night you get dead. If, if, <laughs> if we could, I would prefer as well tracking at night, but basically during the day is, is the most safe time to um, track and um, well, we need lights to track. If there was light like yeah. now, I will track anytime. Yeah. But you got to remember that with a lot of animal behavior, animals behave different, differently to human beings at night yeah. as to the day. During the day, we're still the dominant diurnal predator. At night, we give away our dominant predator status and we become food. Yeah. So uh, most people who end up dead in the bush 
are people who play around at night doing silly things. Yeah. And, and it might not be a lion, it might be an elephant, a hippo, anything. Yeah. Yeah. We or cannot see, or a snake, yeah. exactly. Um, Ian says, thank you for answering my question. Um, and everyone says, we're, we're two troubles together. Uh, Norman is, no, we need more Norman on the show. He's as cheeky as Brent, gives him a run for his money. Um, uh, uh, to have an actual tracking assessor with Norman's experience doing live safaris is fantastic from Sir 50. So yeah, so we're very excited about this. Um, and I just want to make sure I'm not going to throw VM under the bus. Do we have some of the, the intro for Norman's uh, tracking with Norman that we can, we can play? I'll wait for VM to tell me if, we, if that's going to be possible now that the power's in. Okay, we're just going to give VM a second. Obviously, everything's been turned upside down with the, the load shedding. Okay, he's ready. So here's the introduction to Tracking with Norman on Eco Training's YouTube channel. Hi everyone, my name is Norman. Welcome to our track and sign identification series, um, which is going to run for like, you know, a couple of weeks. Here, we have a very beautiful um, lion track. Yeah, I see like three pronounced lobes. So a dog family um, track, we have like, you know, two lobes. If it was us, we would say that's a thumb. Okay. In this case, like, you know, getting myself in this position so I can have that nice um, awareness and also like, you know, looking at the big picture. This shiny part here, just like, you know, when you buy a new pair of shoe, the most um, part of your shoe that where it get worn is this back here. I have a nice um, track of an impala. Basically, that's how you tell um, direction on an elephant um, track. Thank you. So there you guys, so you can actually catch up with Norman quite regularly on uh, Eco Training's YouTube channel, um, and uh, you can actually find the playlist. I think in Painted Dog, you'll find the Eco Training playlist mm -hmm. somewhere. If not, go have a look at Eco Training's uh, YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe, um, of course, and you can catch up with Norman's tracking. Yeah. Um, Daniel from Scotland, Norman would like to know, what is your favorite animal to track and what is your least favorite animal to track? I think it's sometimes it's the same it's, animal. It's the same animal. <laughs> yeah, mine so too. leopard, <laughs> definitely. But, you know, sometimes it's like, when I look at the, I'm like, maybe I should uh, avoid. It's just, it's amazing how leopard will walk in the bush. And um, it's, I know it's one of, it's, a, it's one of the definitely animal that's, um, it's, I won't say it's difficult or hard. It's just, you know, they've got like a More very, yes, have, they have a very fun um, behavior. Like, mm -hmm. you know, one moment you, you could be trailing a leopard and then blah, blah, and then two seconds, quickly. 90 degrees. Yes, because I remember one of the assessments that I did as well, because as a track, I also had to go through um, assessment. So what happened is that I was tracking this um, famous, one of the famous um, leopard between or in service and his name was Anderson Mail. Ah, I, know, a I, very, I know Anderson well. Wow. Yeah, a very cheeky leopard. So yeah. what he did, so I went in, like he went to the and center. he doesn't like people on foot, yeah. Anderson. So he went through the he's river and, he, yeah, yeah, may his soul rest in peace. Exactly. And then I, like he went into this, can I finish my story? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> So I'm just explaining to yes. to to to, to, to Daniel. So he, to Daniel. So he went through the river and, like I thought, any any trekker would think, or even a guide, or even someone who doesn't understand trekking in details. So he went down in the river and then I assumed that he was gonna go that way. I didn't see any tracks that side. And then I went up and then there was a road, nothing. And only when I come back, I found that he was. He just come out from this, um, it was a wild date palm um, ah, um, ticket. ticket. And then he just come out there and then he start walking like, with like, you know, it's like, yeah, you, mm. you can't do anything. So, yeah, so it's definitely a leopard. Definitely yeah. a leopard, yeah. Right, so were you on Londolazi when you were tracking Anderson? Uh, yes, yes, I was. So um, were you close to the causeway? Co causeway, what is that? That concrete crossing through it, the river it's, it's called Funfit. oh Funfit, yeah, yeah. so the Funfit next one crossing, so yeah. i used to work there so i had uh, there's a the big male leopard before anderson his name was campan uh, yes i tried campan yeah a big feet almost like a lioness exactly yeah? so um there was a tracker who 
I worked with for a long time called Simon Matabula. Madala. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. Yeah. So we were tracking him. Him. It was a mating pair, and the same thing. In there, we're in the reeds. Nothing. And no man, he should have gone. They should have gone this way. Yeah. They should have gone this way. And we turned around, and Simon was standing about where the water buck is there. Yeah. And I've got, you know, we're tracking, looking at the ground. And this is a very important lesson, Norman will tell you. You can't always look at the ground when you're tracking. You need oh, to cool lift man. your head. So I'm looking and I'm trying to say, no, no, these look like the most fresh in the wet sand. Mm. And Matapula just goes, hey, mvo, <laughs> don't move. <laughs> and I went like this. And I level at about a meter on top of the sandbank in the reeds. Ooh. There was Kampan. Looking at the butt. And I'm just standing there, a meter away from the biggest male leopard in the Sabi Sands. And Matabula is standing um, another meter. And I was like, now at Simon, he goes, mm. <laughs> we have to go slowly. <laughs> so you, you don't want to point at a leopard, yes, you especially don't not when you're a meter you away from the eye yeah, contact yeah. as well. So basically, Simon and I, we did this. And now all the guests were sitting watching us. <laughs> These two big guys, because Simon is also a big guy, moving at like a snail to try to get at least five and meters. Did he react? Didn't. Nothing, did, not no. even growled. Yeah. But if we had started going, oh, leopard, leopard, leopard. Yeah. He might, I might have had some extra yeah. beauty marks. <laughs> yeah. It's, I know when I was doing my, in 2013, he was still around. Mm, yeah, so. we, 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 we tracked him there. In Londolozi, and uh, yeah, he was a beautiful champ to 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 to, to always track. But uh, um, a hard champ, especially on your track and sign assessment, because it was always tricky whether to say it's a female or it's a male leopard. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, the 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 our um, teachers want you to be specific. So when you go and you know do your own tracking or you with your guest, so you you know to tell like you know. Species, gender, etc., etc. Oh. So, um, I saw a question here from. <laughs> I've lost it now. Oh dear. Uh, Lucas, Norman, if I do my Fagasa level one with eco training, are you the tracking teacher? Um, so it's Lucas. It's, so it's like this. So there's two things that's happening. So if I'm, so I do both. Um, tracking um, course and also I'm involved with Fagasa One courses. So if I am scheduled to do your Fagasa One course, um, the, there's going to be definitely some track and sign lesson that will be involved. However, since you're asking now on this platform, maybe I can ask um, when you book your course, maybe we can make it exceptional and yeah. ask the marketing team or whoever you're booking with that, you know, I would like Norman to be on my course. So Lucas is busy doing the online course, but wants to come oh, yeah. do the practical at a later stage. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. He, you can definitely request that I'm around in your course as well. Because, yeah, if now you're sitting behind, I know all those lectures that you guys are doing. Um, yeah, it's, now, it's Terry fun. made me do one the other day. I was a guest lecturer. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so, yeah, so, and remember, if you are going to do any of the online courses with Eco Training, mention that you heard it first here at Painted Dog TV. With um, Norman. With Norman. <laughs> um, so, a lot of questions, or a lot of people saying we're very funny. Love the interaction. Uh, I've met my match. Um, <laughs> you did. <laughs> He's met his match when it comes to tracking. He, he won't Never. admit it. He won't admit it. He's speaking me. Ah, yeah, I'm pimpan. No, I'm just kidding. You, no, you, you're good eh, in tracking. No, I, I'm very yeah. lucky. Norman and I, we, we've actually had success working as a team. Yeah. So it's always much easier when you've got another tracker Mostly to work with. Mostly it lies on me. <laughs> yeah. Who found the lines the other day? The one you'd been tracking? Yeah, no. That was... Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Like he forgot. He <laughs> forgot about that one. <laughs> so, uh, what 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 happens quite often, which works very well, and particularly for Norman and myself here, yeah, is that Norman will say, "Okay, I've got tracks here. I'm going to stick on the tracks," or I'll say, "I've got tracks here," yeah. and that leaves the other person to jump up ahead. So, okay, let's go one kilometer, two kilometers ahead, 
yeah. which obviously shortens our time into finding yeah. the animals. Yeah. And that's worked very well with yeah, uh, with Lagatha. Yeah, We've I'm done me. that a couple of times. You and who? You and me. Who is Lagatha? That lioness who's always by herself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, the world, me and him, good team in the bush. Yeah. yeah. Very good team. And that's why you see um, this energy, it's not just, we don't know <laughs> each other like in this, in front of a camera, camera yeah. but also in the bush, our working um, relationship is very, very good. So yeah. people have asked, someone asked earlier how long we've known each other. Norman actually can't remember meeting me for the first time. And that yeah. was in 2015. I don't, yeah, yeah, you I can't only recall when you were, we were here. Yeah, okay. so yeah. Yeah, but I was still very young. Yeah. Really like, I yeah. met Norman for the first time on the bridge across the Livuvu River. And I, that was 2015. Yeah, Let's 2015. See. Jeez, I was still very young. Eh? Yeah. yeah. How old are you now, Norman? Oh, you don't want to tell I'm me. I'm old. Right? I'm very old. <laughs> he thinks he's old. <laughs> How old is Norman? Let's guess. I said 28, 29 maximum. <laughs> I'm very old. It's very rude in my culture telling you your, your age. How old Giving, do you think I am? Nah, maybe just over 35, somewhere around there. Yeah, you know. It was, yeah, you know. If no, I don't know. Last year. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Everyone's guessing your age now. 28, 34, 29. Jeez, I'm very old. Eh? According to that, eh? Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm 28. Here we go. Yes, I'm 28. So that's why I can call him Mampimpan, because yeah. I'm 10 years older than he is. Yeah, and this <laughs> as well. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm, yeah, I'm nearly 40 man. and I still can't grow a beard. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, guys, well, um, if anyone's got any other questions for Norman about tracking. Um, now, I think one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is everyone knows about us tracking lions and leopards and elephants. Yeah. But if you do come on one of the courses and, and get someone like Norman, he can show you where a swallow has collected mud to build its nest or the difference between a, um, a sand frog and a... What am I thinking about now? The grumpy old man. Yeah, I mean, a sand the frog. bullfrog. Oh, the bullfrogs. So you'll learn frog tracks, you'll learn yeah. antelope tracks, you'll learn lion tracks elephant tracks you will learn the sign of where certain bird species have been feeding yeah. ants yeah. insects yeah. so it is it's an incredibly vast array of knowledge one needs to do to be an expert like norman in this field yeah. um cats would like to know um about your family um can you tell us anything about your family uh what what does she want to know? I don't about? know. <laughs> Just tell us about your family. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I don't even know where to start. Okay, I'm from a family of... So, you know, being a Tsonga, back in the days, um, um, a man would marry more than one, um, more than one wife. So, uh, I'm from a second house, basically meaning my mom was a second wife. So from my dad's side, we are somewhere around like we were seven, eight, and then we just lost someone. I just lost the brother that I was born with um, about a month ago. Um, yeah, I, I don't think there's so much to yeah. tell um, to that, but yeah, that's pre pretty much about it. Um, Africa Sky would like to know what languages do you speak? Oh, I speak the most, and I mean the most romantic language in South Africa, and that's Shitsonga, also known as Shangan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so Babu, <laughs> Babu Swazi is, is no, not no, no, no. true, not but true I, in I the think background. If Babu get involved, this topic, will, like, you know, we can stay here the whole night. Yes. Because if we backtrack, we never had like, a, okay, let me quickly touch on Tsonga versus Shangan. So this is how our tribe, so we don't have Shangan people. There's no such thing. So we have like, you know, Tsonga speaking people. So back in the days when we read about history of Africa or about South Africa, there was one of the Ndunas or like Nduna, what is that Nduna in chief. English? A chief or, or a king, um, a king yeah. um, Shaka Zulu and like, you know, a sub Nduna. So a premier yes. minister or Out. something like that. That was sent. To, um, to conquer the leaders of the Tsonga-speaking people. people. And his name was Kumale 
Soshangube. Yes. Sosh, no, no, Soshanga, not Soshangube. Soshanga. No, Soshanga. Soshanga is where. So, no, 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 no. Soshangube okay. is a place in um in Pretoria. Yeah. Soshanga. So this guy he conquered our people, uh, our leaders, and then from there he started marrying some of the. Um, because he also brought his like warriors or whatever, exactly. and then what he did now because of that like you know like Zulu land like Shaka okay. Zulu Zulu it's so actually the, the a surname. Tsong, the Tsonga yeah it means heaven in Zulu, yeah, Zulu but it, that's a surname so, like, for someone. The Tsonga people originally from Zulu land from Kuzi through to. Uh -uh. I, I'm from. I'm, we're not from Zulu. <laughs> Let me tell you. Don't tell me about my 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 my, my roots. So from there when I'm dot. From there, we were called Amashangan because of mm. that leader mm -hmm. that was sent to conquer our leaders. You understand? Yeah. So because I know that someone, I know someone is definitely sitting there disagreeing with me. It's fine. You have your own vision of story, which is <laughs> totally fine. Um, because I know people from Pumalanga, they call them um, the Shangan people. Mm -hmm. And then people from... Um, Limpopo, we uh, like you know, Tsonga. The, but we don't say we are Tsongan, we say mm. we are Tsonga, um, we are Shangan, it's the same thing because we know that we. So, one of the things when we we like we proud of ourselves, we say, like, I'm a grandson, or we are the grand grandchildren of so Shangan in Gungunyan. If you know the the history of Tsonga people, you say like, ah, nitukulu wa Tsonga wo ngungunyana wo, eh, eh, like, you know, you say something like that, but it's never really about, the, we don't have a tribe. That's why, also, if you check on those nine official languages of South Africa, mm -hmm. right, there's no such thing called Shangan. Mm -mm. It's Shitsonga. Shitsonga. Yes, so it's Shitsonga. It's, it's fine, you can disagree with me. I'm, it's I'm, very, I'm, it's very widely spoken, all the way yeah. from Zululand, Mozambique. The whole coastal region through yeah up here and then bavo's people in the middle surrounded yeah. by shangan this yeah <laughs> yeah shangan so strong yeah. thank you wendy it's very romantic man i tell you come to the really shangan land romantic. yeah it is yeah, listen ba bavo and norman are having their own thing li going listen, on here li listen li <laughs> listen say nakuranza nakuranza do you know what that means? No. I love you. I love you. Nakuranza. Yeah, that sounds, you know, huh? At this point, Nakuranza, no man. Yeah, no, no, Nakuranza. Okay, enough about okay, this. Okay. I don't want to talk about this well, anymore. We, we, a, a lot of people would love to hear more about culture, so maybe we'll do an Animal World Live, we'll get Bavu to sit here, and then I'll just sit over there and laugh at you two arguing. No, we're not, we're not really arguing. <laughs> no, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. I know you're not really yeah. arguing. Yeah. Um, but it's been absolutely wonderful having Norman uh, with us tonight on Animal World Live, and hopefully we'll be able to get him back as a guest. Yeah. Uh, maybe we might have to do a, a dog diary video Norman and I will go tracking. We'll, yeah. We can do a Definitely. tracking video. Definitely. So, but it has abs been absolutely wonderful having all of you with us. And so great, as always, to have a, such a special guest like Norman. Nakuranza. Namuna Nakuranza. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. Um, um, so yeah. a quick thank you to our, our sponsors, Lead Lenser, who literally kept us illuminated during load shedding. We wouldn't be able to be sitting in the light with, without our amazing sponsorship from Lead Lenser Torches. Um, to you, of course, our patrons, um, our Super Chat sponsors, uh, to Eco Training and Anton and John Lutzkan from Pridelands, uh, and of course uh, to the Stenbach family on the Ritzbrate Reserve, uh, to the whole Painted Dog crew, thank you very much, we couldn't do this without, and again, a big thank you to our special guest, Norman, um, and we can't wait to have a bit more fun with Norman in the bush, yeah, which I'm sure we will. Um, am I forgetting something? Yes, I am. Teespring, um, if you want to get any of your painted dog kit, um, like our lion is wearing this evening. Um, and he's, well, he's just wearing the cap this evening. Uh, but here we go. Brian's going there. There we go. He's also borrowed my sunglasses for the evening because the lead lens of torches are so bright. Um, but if you, if you want to get any of the painted dog kit, go have a look at Teespring. I'm sure Charles will be popping a, a link on shortly. Other than that, um, please take your conversations across to the Painted Dog TV app. Um, we'll be engaging with you there. But from all of us, a big thank you to Norman. Oh, thank you, man. It's been really a pleasure. It's coming. been fun, eh? Um, huh? Thank you so, so much. So I, I've got to have the last word, Machanyan. 
mafufunyana mahlanyana mafufunyana mahlanyana mafufunyana so he's saying i'm difficult i'm saying he's crazy good night we love you cheers guys <laughs>